Hi and welcome back to the next video. This time we are dealing with Cypress or an E2E testing tool, so end-to-end -end testing. And what this does is it's basically clicking in our UI and uh, behaving like a real user would do. So our structure is as follows. First we'll have a look at a quick overview of our E2E integration and unit tests. What are them? What are they used for? Then we look at our video outcome, what we will do in this video here. After that we have a look at our user story for building our outcome. And then we will implement or code the tests and uh, implement Cypress and then close it. So this video or is there also for our blog project and can also be used just as standalone for having a quick look into Cypress. So here we have all our, our an overview of the tests. So at the bottom of the pyramid you can see we have unit tests that are written very easily and they verify that an individual and or isolated part um, behaves like expected so you can just test the component um, and you're not testing um, it with other components but just this stuff there or just one method on, of function. Then we have integration tests that are very, a little bit more complicated um, and they verify that all those simple little parts work together as expected so if one function is using the other then we will test or from another class uses something that this works fine. Um, and then we have now the E2E test that we will do now. And they are also called functional testing. And it's basically a robot that behaves like a user and this navigates through our app and verifies that everything works as expected. This will test the whole application because it's clicking in the front end, but the front end is also just making the normal request to our back end. And so we will check, we could check that everything in our application works right. So for example, if we enter um, in our search the username Thomas, then we want um, that our front end gets this, this input, sends a request to our back end, and then when that our back end re um, here returns all users with username Thomas, and that our front end displays them. So we would test the whole app this. And as you can see on the left side, um, E2E tests are more expensive and unit tests are more cheap, so it's like going up. And um, E2E tests are slow, unit tests are fast. We can see it yeah, very easily here. So let's start. So here we have our Cypress tool and you can see we have all our integration test files that we made. And then we can run all our specs and then it will add our, or open our Cypress runner. And we will just go through all these files and we go against our local host 4100, so against our Angular application. You can see it's clicking everything and checks all the values that we have. So we check that our page loads successfully. We check for a right spell text. You can see it here. If I hover over it, then we will have um, the snapshot from the page at this moment on the right side. And we should check also if we can log in. If we, we type in our email, we type in our password, we click on it, we navigate. We are loading our user table. We display the users. We navigate to the next page and we filter also users by username and verify that they are exactly for results. Let's have a quick look at our story. We are here in video 12 and we want to set up E2E tests with Cypress. So as a technical lead, I want to have E2E tests so we can test the application after every increment if everything runs as planned and nothing breaks. And the acceptance criteria are E2E test suit set up with Cypress and we want tests for homepage, login and our users table. So why we do this is if we make a new um, version of our software or we add a commit or some changes in the code and then we could actually break something um, different so what we didn't expect to happen and so if we forget it so we can just let our E2E tests run and then they will say okay everything works as expected as before or something broke. So now we can move this car to doing and start with a so let's switch to our branch. We can see we are on our develop branch. So we can type git status. And you see we are on develop. So we clear this. And we can just use git flow feature start video 12 to go to our uh, new branch for our feature. So we have now a new branch based on develop. And we can now start implementing everything. And so first what we want to do is we have or want to have a new folder here. So because we have our Postman collection of our um, API requests, we have our front end here with Angular, we have our API, 
with our Visual Studio Code settings and our README. And so we want to have a new folder for our E2E tests. So we can say we just go here and we create a new folder and we name it E2E. So we have the same naming convention as before. Then we can CD into our E2E folder and we can uh, make a new package.json file. So we can with npm init, you make a new package.json. We can say how we want to name it. So we can say E2E version one, description, entry point. So nothing special, so we can just go with it. So you see now we have our package JSON here with nothing in it. And now we have to install Cypress so we can go for our Cypress documentation. So we go for the docs and then we go to our getting started installing Cypress. And so we can just copy this command and then install it into our dependencies, so in our package JSON and our, all our entries. And we will save also um, then our node modules here. So we have to wait a bit. So now you see we have all our Cypress dependencies here. And then we can, for example, or like in the documentation says, the next thing that we want to do is, uh, let's say we are here, we can start, let's look where it is, but we can start um, Cypress and then it will generate all the folders for us that we need to, um, to start it. And I remember that this should be uh, npx, I think Cypress open. And so we can just search for it here. So you see we are here, we have installed it and then we can open it. And by this we can just use npx Cypress open to run something into our um, from our node modules and we can later add an entry here to our script so for example we could say like they did here let's see where it is we could add this command here so it's get more use so we could just say npm run cypress open and now it will open Cypress, it will generate all our folder structure that we need for running tests, and this will take some time. So now you can see Cypress has opened here, and you say they added some examples, folders, and integration, so we can add our tests, our own tests, into Cypress integration, and then we can run them. So we can say got it, and if you run the specs here, you can choose which browser you want to use, so we could go for Chrome, for example, and then it will run all our tests that are here in this folder. So here are some example tests and we can have a look at it later. Let's run it again and see if it's working. Yeah. You see it now it's now going to um, the URL example.cypress.io and it's testing all of those, uh, yeah, it's making all of those tests to this page. So it's looking for a type into our DOM element. It, it has a type take email.com and all of those things here. So we can now, you see this is all working and you can always here at the left side look what went wrong or what went right. If you go into one special test and you can see that it all worked as expected. But we can now stop this. And this is, for example, your runner that you need. And what we can do now is we can uh, just delete all these files here and add our own tests. So 
So we can just add or delete our example folder. And uh, then add here our own folders that we need. So one of the first things that we want to do is here, you see we don't have a git ignore here, so it would um, store all or save all our node modules into our um, git. What we don't want cause these are very large files. So what we are doing is we can um, add a git ignore file. And for this we can load up what we made here. So we can just remove all um, or don't save these folders. So if there's a folder node modules, it will not be affected by Git or saved by Git. And now you see this is li lightly great, so it won't be um, saved by Git into our repository. So now we have here our um, Cypress, our E2E tests, and now we can add here a new folder. Or we can just add a new file, and the first file could be, for example, constants.js. And what we need here, we can say we want to export some constants like username and password. So we don't need to type them always when we want to show them. And we can just copy this from our postman to so our API requests. And uh, oh, you remember, like our password has always been ASD. And our user, for example, that we can take is uh, from our login, our email, this email. We can just insert it here, and then we can use our constants. So now we can just add another file, and we can say, for example, homepage.spec.t. Uh, JS, so it's not TypeScript files, but uh, spec files. And uh, here we can add a new test like the following. We say describe. And then we say, where are we? And so we say, for example, we are on our homepage. Then we make function. And here we can now make all our tests. So we could say it. Then we say, what should it do? And we can say it should load so, um, successfully. And so the full name would be homepage should load successfully. And then we can add here some logic. And for example, we could say we just want um, Cypress. So this is the short key for Cypress, CY dot visit. And we can say here, for example, just our um, yeah, our um, base route. So what we can do now is we can start up our backend with npm run start dev, and we can run our front end so that we can let the E2E tests run against our um, server or our page or our backend and our server. And so we can just say and reserve. And you have to look up because here um, Cypress has a very nice documentation where you can uh, have a look at all different things and everything that is um, there um, or what you need. So one thing that we need is um, we have here in our folder a Cypress.json where we can make um, config to our <coughs> um, to all our servers, so we don't want to type always in localhost four thousand two hundred. Um, but for so like here, so we don't want to do this every time we're going against our page. So we can name this with base URL in our um, uh, Cypress.json file. So we can add this here, and now we say our localhost is not eight thousand. 200, but we want to go always against 4200. And now we have here our spec file. And if we now let it run, so you see we have now here our two files, and we can say we want to run all the specs. And then we can see that now it tries to visit our localhost 4200 and it loads successfully. You can see here. So 
you see our app got loaded here. So one of the next things or we could test, for example, is we could say um, should contain write spelled texts. And then we could check for all um, the text that should be contained on this page. So we can Cypress docs or and look up in the documentation um, what we can use. So let's see. Um, let's search for Cypress, Cypress Wizard. Yeah, so under commands, you can find all the commands that are available to you that you can use with a description, with an example here. And we can, yeah, just use this. And so the first thing that we could do is we could go for contains. And so you see we are now the element contains. And so we are just looking here in the simplest thing for our content. So we could very simply say our page should contain wherever it is. We have something called users. And then we can copy this. And we say we have something called admin, called log in and for example to make it that you probably fail we could make something for register because it needs in the act needs to be in the actual dom so if i now rerun all our tests you can see our first test loaded successfully and the second went wrong because this contained users here you see it it's colored if i hover over it admin log in but register is not in our actual DOM. So, bef so to see register, we will need to click this and then it should be visible. So we have to add something to our test before. So we have here in and register. And what we want to do is we want to get an element. So this is another command of um, Cypress. And we could, for example, get this here by um, the class. So we could go into um, the DOM and look it up. And now we can see that this element here, let's see. Oh, we could also go for this element here, mat select. And then, so we could say CI get mat select. And then we can make a click on it. So it will open it and then it will check if there's something called register. So you see now the test run again via Queen. As you see now it clicked here on our login. You can see the red dot on the top right side and a little snapshot before and after the DOM. You see it at the bottom here. And then it checked if there's contained something register. And you can see it's there. So this could be one of our, yeah, our two first tests. And then we could make another file, for example, and name it login.spec.js. We could make again describe, so describe which component or where are we in our um, page. And so we could, for example, say um, test login flow. And then we can make our test with it. So I'm typing always this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we say should log in user. And then we can say first we start on our um, local host 4200 as we said in our cypress.json file here. And then we want to visit our login page. So we could say 
cy.visit. So go for a URL that we specify here. And we could just say go for login. And then what we want to get is our form controls. So we have two form controls there, our username and our um, password. And we can now track this here if we go on our login page. We have here our email. And there are multiple ways you can get this property. And for example, one thing could be um, this is an input and it has a form control name here, email. So we could copy this and could um, get this here. And for this, you need um, the, the square brackets or what I used uh, called. So we can get it like this. And then we want to use type. So as a, it completely looks like a user is typing very, very fast. And what we can type here is our username. So the username that we have in our constants.js here. And uh, to use it, we can just say const username. And for example, we can also do our password because we will need it later. And we require this from our constants file. And then we have here our username that we specified there. So we type in this. The next that we want to type in is um, here the same, but now we have the property password. So now it's called password. And then we want to type password. And one thing that we need here, we have to make in these brackets, I don't know why they disappeared. And then we could click on our login button. And how we could get this is like before, we could go for the type. And this is from type submit, so we could go for this. So there are very many ways that you can get an element from your page. And then we could say, for example, we want to check our URL. And we can say it should do something. So what should it do? And we say it should include something. And this should include the word admin. So now we can save and this will run our tests automatically again. Or not because we have a new file. So now we can stop this. And so you want to run all our spec files that, there, that, that are here. And you see now it was typing the user or the email, the password, it logged in. So this is working see all the DOM snapshots before and after. So we can now go for the next and last test. And this could be, for example, testing our users table. So we could name this user.spec or users.spec.ts. And we again make a describe. And now we are on our users. Um, page or a component, whatever we want. So I miss something. What am I not seeing? Ah, I made a TS file, but this should be definitely JS. So what we can make it first, we can say it, and then we can say it should load user table. And here we can just um, use some assertion, assertions or a ci.get. So we can say ci.get. So I miss it again. And we could go again for, well, go for when we, now you have to imagine we are on our starting page. So we are on our page 
um, localhost 4200. And the first thing that we want to test is, can we navigate to our users here? So how can we get this element here? We can look it up <clears throat> and it should have a link. So for example, we could go for, where is it? Yeah, we could go for router link users. And here again, we need these brackets. Just copy it in. Then we want to click on it. So we are now, now on our users page. And then we could, for example, get or check if we get something. And this could be our table, for example. So we could get this met table element here. So we could just uh, go for the class and go for mat.table and check if this is working. So for it to run, we need to reload or stop our tests because if we have a new file and to run these tests from the new file, we also need um, to restart it. So you see this is working. It finds our table here. And we also want to do some other stuff. So we want to check that um, there are some users that are displayed in our users table. Or we could first check, could display um, right column names. And so we could just, so very simple check like on our homepage, if we make ci.contains, we check if something on this page contains um, this name. So we could go for the names of uh, our columns. And uh, these are the names from our the properties from our user. So we have ID, we have name, we have username, we have email, and we have role. And we can just let it run again. And you see all our column names and it's working. And we can also check if we navigate to our next page. And we can say ci.get and click on it. So we can for query our element here, um, for example, let's move it up. So we have here our button that we want to click. So we could go here for our button and we could use, for example, let's do it, use uh, the ARIA label. So this is copied here. And an ARIA label is mainly used for, um, how it, is it called in English? Um, So if you're not seeing good or something, or if you can't use um, the mouse, then this is reading to you, so to the user. So we can now check if it's navigating to the next table. And you see now we are to the second page of our table. And the last thing that we want to check is uh, that our filter. So if we use here, you see we have our filter here. So if I type in uh, Thomas, we just get the users displayed that have the username Thomas. So we want to test this. And we can say should filter users by username. And we can just say ci.get. We want to get our element. So we go for this here. And what we could go for is for example, the placeholder. So you can nearly go for everything here and just add this. And you can even go if you go for an element that exists three times, so you could go for a button here. Then it would find two and you could also say, just use the first one, so like an array, or use the second one. So there are very many possibilities. So we want to you get our uh, input field and then we want to type something. For example, we could type Thomas. And then we want to check how many entries are in our table. So we could go 
again for our map table. Then we use find. So we, 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 we count or we look up how many of this element we find. And so we go for a map row. So every row is an entry in our table. And then this should be So this should have a length. So this you can look look up. Um, let's see, Cypress should have length. And you can see it here. So there are some different ways you can use it. But we can find our way. dot should and you can see this would be our way so we check if this here the children have a length of eight so if there are eight entries in our case and now we can look up if we go for this here we have four entries so we would expect to find four rows and now we can run it again and we will see that this works fine so this would be all our basic tests for the beginning and we can just always add some tests to this and this was just to give you a little introduction and in the next video what we will do is we will add um, mock awesome to um, make fancy reports because one thing that that is always good if you make um, the e2e tests or let them run at, uh, before you integrate your code into something or before you make a relays then you let both tests run and then for example your boss wants to know if everything is right and everything behaves like before or so if the app is being um, is not having any errors or issues and so you can for example just send them the e2e report that we create in the next video that could be look looking like this here where you can see it's everything is green or something is red and so um, this could be a way how um, your boss, for example, who is not understanding that much of code, um, could have an easy way to look into the test results without um, installing this here, for example. So let's finish up our code. So as you remembered, we have now here added all our spec files. We can also add plugins here, fixtures here, support, make some more things here. And don't forget to always look it up in your docu in the documentation. So here are very many um, commands that you can use and the assertions. So this is very, I think, the best testing tool out there at the moment. So we can now commit this back to our, um, you know, to our branch. So we can now say git add minus upper a, we say git commit. And what we want to commit is uh, we are now in video 12. And we say edit Cypress for running E2E tests and edit first tests for login homepage and users table. Then we could push it. And we can also directly finish this up. We can say git flow feature finish. And now we will bring it back onto our develop branch. And here we can add something into our uh, readme file. So we have here our commands for our backend and for our front end. And so we can say here start the E2E tests. And so the first thing is are the same. We go into our E2E folder, we can npm install it, and then we can npm run 
we can just look up how we named it. So in our package JSON, we said npm run, and then we go for Cypress open. And this is how you could start your E2E tests. So we add this to our develop. And so we say added E2E to readme and we push this. And then we can check against our story here. And you can see we have set up our E2E test suit with Cypress and we have our homepage login and users table tested. So we can move this to done and commit or I will merge everything later into our repository or on our master 